everyone, it's Tony with Hidden Light Photography. And some questions I've been getting quite a bit, which is awesome by the way, so make sure to keep them coming, is in regards to filters. What filter should I use? When should I use a filter? Or what filters are there? Now, filters can be a can of worms subject. The deeper you go, the more complex it can get, and the more questions arise. And for this video, I'm gonna try to keep it as simple and basic as possible. And if you find this video useful, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. I don't want you to miss out on any future content. Now let's jump into Filters 101. What are filters? An easy way to picture a filter is thinking about sifting sand. The smaller the screen, the smaller the particles that are allowed to pass through and everything else is blocked from passing. Only instead of filtering sand, our filters filter light. Different filters are designed to allow certain light waves to pass through while blocking the other light waves. There are different types of filters as well as different manufacturers. An easy analogy is automotive manufacturers. In automotive, you have different brands such as Ford, Nissan, and BMW. With filters, you have Optolong, Antlia, Chroma, so on and so forth. Each brand has their pros and cons. In automotive, you can separate the vehicles into categories such as car, SUV, and truck. In the filter world, we have broadband, narrowband, light pollution, UV IR cut, etc. Just like in automotive, each vehicle type serves a different purpose. So does each filter type. Now, let's talk about UV IR cut filters. Most of us think of light as just the colors we can see. Red, green, blue, and everything in between. But your camera sees more than you do. It also sees ultraviolet light, UV, and infrared light, IR. These wavelengths are invisible to your eyes, but not to your camera sensor. That might sound like a good thing, but it's not. These extra wavelengths can actually hurt your image quality by softening your stars and throwing off color balance. A UV IR cut filter does exactly what it sounds like. It blocks ultraviolet and infrared light and allows the other wavelengths to pass through. Some astro cameras actually come with a UV IR cut window at the sensor, so it's a good idea to check the manufacturer and see if your camera has one built in. If not, don't worry, that's exactly why these filters exist. Some light pollution filters actually already have UV IR cut built into them. Let's tackle one of the most popular filter types, light pollution filters, sometimes called LP, LPS, or UHC filters. If you're imaging from a city or suburbs, you've probably seen that nasty orange or gray glow in your subs. That's sky glow caused by street lights, LEDs, billboards, and all kinds of artificial sources. Light pollution filters are designed to help. They work by blocking out specific wavelengths of common city lights, especially sodium vapor lines and mercury vapor lines. What's left is darker background and better contrast for your target. But light pollution filters aren't magic. With the ever-growing popularity of LED lighting, it's getting harder to block unwanted light pollution. But these filters do help in most cases. Broadband covers the visible spectrum. This is how we naturally view objects with our eyes, and it's represented by red, green, and blue light. A one-shot color camera is broadband by nature since it captures all three color channels through its Bayer matrix. When imaging in broadband with a one-shot color, you'll either use the sensor as is if it already has a built-in UV IR cut window, or add a light pollution filter if your skies are affected by glow. When it comes to monochrome cameras, broadband imaging is done using separate red, green, and blue filters. Each filter allows only its specific wavelength to pass through while blocking the others. 
giving you full control and higher detail in each channel. Monochrome also utilizes a special filter called luminance, which allows all possible wavelengths through and is used to collect maximum signal. Narrowband, on the other hand, is different. It's often outside the visible spectrum and is commonly known as false color imaging. This is how we get those famous Hubble palettes. Unlike broadband, which accepts a wide range of wavelengths, narrowband filters isolate very specific emission lines. The main ones are hydrogen alpha, also known as HA, oxygen 3, also known as O3, and sulfur 2, also known as S2. With a one-shot color camera, narrowband is captured using dual-band, tri-band, or quad-band filters. These are designed to work with the Bayer matrix, allowing the camera to pick up specific emission lines across its color channels. Monochrome cameras, on the other hand, use dedicated narrowband filters, HA, O3, and S2, to capture each emission line individually with maximum sensitivity and detail. Broadband, UV IR, and light pollution filters are pretty straightforward. But when it comes to narrowband filters, there's one more piece to understand. Emission lines and bandwidth. So what's an emission line? It's the specific wavelength of light that an element emits. For example, hydrogen alpha emits at 656.3 nanometers. Sulfur 2 emits at 672.4 nanometers. Oxygen 3 emits at 500.7 nanometers. Narrowband filters are designed to capture just a tiny sliver of light around those wavelengths. That's where bandwidth comes in. You'll often see filters labeled as 3nm, 5nm, or 7nm. That's the width of the window the filter opens, centered on the emission line. So a 3nm oxygen-3 filter captures a narrow 3 nanometer band centered on 500.7 nanometers letting in just pure oxygen-3 signal and rejecting almost everything else. A 7nm filter, on the other hand, opens a wider window, still centered on 500.7 nanometers, but lets in a bit more signal and a bit more background noise or light pollution. So which is better? Well, more narrow isn't always better. 3nm filters give you cleaner, higher contrast data, great for light polluted skies. 7nm filters let in more signal, great for faster optics or darker skies. It's all about balance, contrast versus signal. A quick word of caution when you're choosing filters. If you're using fast optics, typically f4 or lower, make sure the filters you choose are optimized for fast systems. At faster focal ratios, light hits the filter at steeper angles which can shift the passband and reduce transmission, especially with more narrow filters like 3 nanometers. To avoid this, look for filters specifically labeled for high-speed systems or fast optics. Most manufacturers like Antlia, Astronomic, and Chroma will note this in the filter specs. It's a small detail that can make a big difference in performance. So now that we know what filters are and what each one does, when do we use each one? Let's break it down by camera type and target type. For one-shot color cameras imaging galaxies, reflection nebula, dark nebula, and star clusters, if your camera doesn't have a UV IR cut filter built in, you'll want to add a UV IR cut filter. If you're in a light polluted area, use a light pollution filter to improve contrast and reduce sky glow. Many light pollution filters already include UV IR blocking, so make sure to check the filter specs. For emission nebula, planetary nebula, and supernova remnants, this is where dual band, tri band, or quad band filters come in. These isolate specific emission lines like HA, O3, and S2, and work well with the Bayer matrix of one shot color cameras to reveal deep structure in nebula and allow you to turn your image into a Hubble palette masterpiece. You can also use dual, tri, and quad band filters on galaxies, not for the full image, 
but to capture star-forming regions in hydrogen alpha. This is best used as supplemental data blended with your broadband image. For monochrome cameras imaging galaxies, reflection nebula, dark nebula, and star clusters, you'll use a full broadband filter set, luminance, red, green, and blue. These give you complete control and higher detail, especially in post-processing. For emission nebula, planetary nebula, and supernova remnants, this is where mono shines. Use dedicated HA, O3, and S2 narrowband filters. This gives you the cleanest possible separation between emission lines, ideal for creating false color composites like the classic Hubble palette. Like with one-shot color, you can also use HA filters on galaxies to bring out star-forming regions, especially when blended with broadband data. Again, it's meant to enhance, not replace your RGB channels. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did and want to help support the channel, check out that join button and consider joining a Hidden Light Photography membership. There's lots of perks in it for you, and your support helps me bring you more content. Another way you can help support the channel is checking out my High Point Scientific Affiliate link if you're in the market for some new gear. It doesn't cost you anything extra, and the support helps me keep the channel growing. Also, do me a favor. That channel icon that popped up? Hit that channel icon and subscribe. I don't want you to miss out on any useful information. Drop a comment in the comment section. Did you learn anything new? What filters do you use? And then, check out that next video. Until the next time, clear skies.